It's me, Natalie, the world's most glamorous worm farmer. <laughs> All jokes aside, hey you guys, Natalie here and welcome back to Hate's hey, a Good Life. I'm so glad you're here because today I'm gonna show you how I harvest worm castings and make aerated worm tea. And no, worm tea is not leachate. Get it straight, I'm gonna show you how to make the most amazing worm tea for your garden today. But more importantly, I wanna share with you why I think worm farming is for everyone and how worms could save the world with a little help. Without further ado, let's hop into this video. Oh wait, I almost forgot. Brief announcement. Website is launching Monday. Can't wait. You can find all my eBooks for worm farming there. Also, you can sign up for my worm farming course there. It's launching in May. I can't wait to see you guys there. Now, without further ado, let's hop into this worm farming, harvest, castings, aerated worm tea video. Let's go. Okay, so do you guys remember this worm farm? This is my first worm farm ever that I got from my family for Christmas a couple years ago. Well, actually many years ago at this point. I gave it to my mom, but she brought it back because we're filming the course. And I wanna share with you guys how cool this worm bin is. First of all, it's beautiful. I absolutely love this worm bin and I will include a link for it down below. The other cool thing is that it's very space saving. And you know, for me as somebody who's an urban homesteader growing in suburbia, I'm always looking for ways to save space. The reason this is a space saver is that much like vertical gardening, this is a vertical migration setup for worm farming. What does that mean? Well, in the world of worm farming, you can actually encourage worms to go where you want them to go so that you can harvest their castings. Now I think, that it's a little misnomer that you will be able to completely eradicate the, the castings layer, this first layer of worms. And that's why I use a sieve. You can also do the mound method where you slowly take away the top layers. But even with that method, you're still gonna end up with some worms in your castings. But the idea behind a vertical worm farming setup is pretty simple, is in this vertical migration system, you want to start in the bottom layer and work your way up. So essentially you're gonna start your worm farm in this first layer, this lower level and then once that's completely maxed out, you're gonna create those same layers that I teach you how to make in my eBooks and in the course and everything. But then you're going to do that up here and they're going to migrate upwards and then you'll be able to harvest castings from this bottom layer. Let's hop into this worm bin and collect some worm castings, also known as a vermicast. I call it composting because that's like a colloquial term that everybody understands, but the appropriate term for compost made with worms is vermicast or vermicomposting. Oh wow. Okay, so I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. This is kind of a bummer. I left this worm bin out in the front and it looks like the top layer got a little too dry, but let's learn together and let me show you what true too dry looks like. See how it's like, just it just feels dry. It feels kind of like dry soil. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's also not the best. Luckily, this bottom layer stayed pretty moist and cool and dark and dry, and I still see worms in here, so let me show you a closer look at that. So pretty much any time I'm in the bins, I'm always assessing for has the food been eaten and how is the moisture level? And both of those things are checked off the, the tick boxes. So I'm seeing that the moisture level is perfect, all of the food has been eaten, and I also see worms. I just saw a worm, where'd you go? Oh, here's a wormy. So definitely still signs of life, which is fantastic. Now, I get a lot of messages from people who are starting off their worm farms and they say things like, oh no, Natalie, where are my worms? Now, a little bundle of worms is known as a clue of worms and sometimes worms actually bunch together. And so what I'll encourage people to do is if they can't find their worms genuinely, is I'll say, take something hard from your bin, like this un composted bit of wood and go around like this and see if you can't find a little clump of worms. And as I'm going around, I'm finding more and more worms. So don't be discouraged if you don't see them right away. Sometimes when they're stressed, they'll kind of bundle up together and it's just like a protective mechanism. So don't worry if you don't see a lot of worms. Would I prefer to see more worms in this bin? Yes. But am I still happy to see worms? Yes, absolutely. And so what we're going to do is save these worms. I like to use my sieve, so I'll show you guys how to use my sieve to get your worm casting, separate out your worms, and save those worms so you can start a new worm farm. Let's do that right now. Okay, so we're going to take our castings, which have also kind of conglomerated here on the bottom. Oh, look at this little worm. Hey buddy. Oh yeah, lots of little worms. 
So these little worms are, are hanging on. They're trying to survive, even though it got a little hot and a little dry for them. Hopefully you guys can see that. This is how small little worms are. They're really, really tiny. I hope you guys can see that. So we're going to kind of gently just set this back. I don't want to disturb them too much. Now that I see that they're kind of hanging out there, I'm going to leave them and set this aside. Oh, I see a worm here. Hello, worm. So if you do find worms and you, know, you don't want to send them through the sieve, you don't want to uh, harm them, you can just set them aside. You can add them back to the bin. So if I'm working in the worm farm and I hit a bunch of worms, I obviously am gonna try to not disturb them. Basically, the more ideal the conditions and the less disturbed the worms are, the quicker they'll turn out compost for you. But also, I think just human, humane, humanity, <laughs> humane treatment of worms, if there can be such a thing. I mean, they're living creatures and I don't want to disturb them. I want them to be happy in their worm farm. And so he doesn't like the light. You can see right now he's trying to get away from the light because they are photosensitive and so rather than keep him out here i'm going to quit this demo and put him back in a safe spot that he much prefers rather than my hand okay let's go ahead and sieve our castings so this is just a homemade sieve made of one by twos and quarter inch mesh and this is how i separate my castings from worms for the most part so here's another worm Again, if I can see them and I can save them, I'm not going to go through the trouble of disrupting them. I will kind of just try and encourage them into a new spot. Wow, I'm honestly really impressed. My mom is not much of a worm farmer and there's still a ton of worms in here, which is great. So it just goes to show you how forgiving worm farming can be. So, oops. So then you can kind of gently, wow, there's so many worms. So you can kind of just gently sieve to separate out your worms from your casting. Okay, so any of the bigger worms are now kind of here in this top layer, which I will set aside and we can save this to start a new worm farm. And here is what our finished castings look like. They're really nice and fluffy and honestly, they feel a lot like soil. Okay, so now that I've separated my worms from the worm castings, I'm going to grab about two cups worth of castings and place them in a fine mesh bag. Even with the sieve, you might still see some worms, okay? This, there is no perfect way to completely separate worms from castings, I'm sorry, there's just not. I've tried them all. But you can keep an eye out for them and separate them out yourself uh, so that you feel like you're doing your part to not drown the worms in the worm tea that we're about to make. Once you've got your bag set up, it's time to dunk it in water and get the air going. Now this is the beginning of aerated worm tea. Worm tea is not leachate. Leachate is the juice that leaks from the bin in an overly wet bin, which is not the way I teach you guys to do things. I never wanna see sopping bins. I personally think that bins should not be that wet. Uh, I prefer a more of a damp sponge texture myself. Uh, but there you have it. We've got the beginnings of our worm tea here. This is our tea bag, which we're about to brew in some water with a bubbler. Let me show you how to get that started. Here's my worm tea setup. We've got a five gallon food grade bucket, a tea bubbler from Tea Labs. I've also got this tubing that comes with that. And then this tubing is attached <laughs> to my air pump, which can actually make six bags of worm tea or brews of worm tea at once. All of this is linked down below and in my eBooks, of course. So we've got our air pump, we've got our output hose. Let's go ahead and connect the two. There's not like a perfect airtight seal here. So I just like to kind of shove the tubing in until it feels like it's nice and snug in there. Okay got our tea bag which we can go ahead and tie off with just about anything I'll go ahead and just use my hair tie created my tea bag just here with a with a, a tie I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of hang this you could use twine you could use macrame rope whatever you have on hand I'm actually just gonna kind of tuck this 
into the tie that I just tied because I don't want to go get more rope. See? So just like that, it's going to hang out in the water. Now let's talk about water briefly. Please believe me when I say I'm very grateful for hot, treated water running to my house. However, I don't like all of the chemicals that it's in city water because I'm working really hard to create an ecosystem and a healthy soil biome and vermicomposting biome. And I don't want to be undoing all my hard work with chlorinated, fluoridated water and all the other stuff that they put in there. So to bypass some of that, I put water filters. These are made for RVs, RV water filters on all my hoses around here so that when I go to water my garden or when I go to make worm tea or when I go to water the bins, which is pretty much never, but if I needed to, I would know that I'm adding uh, good water to my situation and not taking away from the ecosystem and the biome that I'm working so hard to build. So can't recommend adding a, an RV filter enough to your hose to protect your worm farm and your garden. That's what I'm gonna do right now. It's really, really simple. I'm just gonna unscrew the old one and screw this new one back in, screw this new one back on, and then we're good to go. Okay, we've harvested our worm castings. We've set up our worm tea brewer. Now all that's left to do is add our chlorine-free, pesticide-free water. And last but not least, set your water pump up somewhere safe where it can't fall into the water because this thing will vibrate a ton. And then, start brewing our tea and to kind of keep it in place sometimes I'll just do that with the five gallon bucket handle to keep the tea bubbler in place molasses don't forget your molasses this is what's gonna help feed those microbes and today I want to talk with you about why I worm farm and how worms could seriously save the world with our help over the years, I've experimented with lots of different kinds of worm farm, from a single tote system with no holes to a vertical migration system with lots of holes that is beautiful for my home to an even bigger vertical migration system of 12 bins that I bought off my friend Steven of Nature's Always Right. That is now how I make all of the inputs for our garden and for our little urban homestead. But here's something I think about a lot is if this compost saved my garden and saved our lemon tree and provides all the nutrients for this homestead garden. What if we all did that around the world? What would our world look like? Could we save our pastures with worm farming? Could we save our grasslands with worm farming? Could we make amazing grass for our cattle full of nutrient dense goodness with worm farming? What if we healed all of that monocropped soil with worm tea? What if big ag got into worm farming and partnered with the worms to make regenerative soil healing goodness with worm castings and worm teas? What if instead of spraying chemicals, we sprayed worm tea to boost the flora on all of our plants and vegetables, decreasing disease and boosting resilience to pests? But what do I know? I'm just a small time worm farmer with big dreams. I do think that we could save the world with worms and that is a world that I wanna be a part of. And I guess you could say that's why I'm an advocate for worms, why I've chosen to be their spokesperson and why I can't wait to keep teaching you guys how you can maximize your space using worm farming to boost nutrients for your garden, to live a more sustainable life and to, who knows, maybe even save the world. Thanks for joining me today, you guys. I am rooting for you and all of your wildest dreams and all of your worm farming. Thank you so much for rooting for us. We have so many cool things in store and I can't wait to share them with you. If you haven't signed up for our newsletter, this is your friendly reminder to do so because then we can be pen pals and you can know about all of the fun and exciting things happening here at Hey, It's a Good Life. I can't wait to share it all with you. Thanks for being here. I'm so glad you're here and I'll catch you guys in the next one.